Hey guys, welcome to the One Punch Investing Show. It's a new show that I created to answer some questions that many investors has been asking me. Now, before I get started, I just want to start with something interesting. I'll tell you some money-related jokes. So, Mr. A say, my wife's credit card got stolen the other day. Mr. B asks, have you reported and cancelled the card? Mr. A say, no, because the thief spends much lesser than my wife. All right, enough of bad jokes. Anyway, coming to the whole key question, because the news actually said that Dow Jones is trading at an all-time PE ratio high. Now, what does this really mean? For those who are already investing for the first time, or if you are new to this, I hope to be able to answer your questions. So if you have any more questions, feel free to comment below and I can answer them in my next particular show. Okay, great. And if you do not want any more bad jokes, too bad, you've got to go through this every single time. So now, there are two key questions to answer. Number one, what is Dow Jones? And number two, what is P ratio? And after knowing this, it is likely you'll be able to discern whether the stock market is at a high right now, at a low right now, and you can even apply this for individual stocks. So by the way, if you like what you are learning, I mean, you have not learned yet, but if you think you're gonna like what you're learning, do help me share this video and also tag your friends who are interested to, to learn how to invest. Okay, now let's go to the first question. What is Dow Jones? Hi guys. So now Dow Jones, basically, if I were to just go to the website right now and show you what is Dow Jones, it is actually a compilation of stocks. Okay, this is the Dow Jones Industrial Average. Now, as you can see on the screen, Dow Jones Industrial Average consists of 30 components. Meaning you say 30 stocks. So, for example, American Express, JP Morgan, Merck, Nike, Apple, Microsoft, and so on. Now, if you look at the news right now, they will say things like Dow Jones is up by 34 points, which is 0.12%, or is down by 100 points, up by how many points? What does it really mean? It actually means that you can see on a daily basis when the stock market is open, each individual stock goes up or goes down that day. For example, American Express went down by 0.01%. JP Morgan went up by 0.04%. But on average, as we calculate the whole entire basket of these 30 stocks, Dow Jones as a whole went up by 34 points, which is 0.12%. Now, these 30 stocks is a representation of the entire US stock market. They use this as a benchmark. In every country, there is a particular index or they call it indices. So now, what does it mean? It means that right now, overall, as a benchmark, what we can see in the stock market is that they say that Dow Jones has reached an all-time high in terms of PE ratio. Yes, exactly. It's like the Nifty, uh, Nifty uh, NSE of uh, India or STI of Singapore, Straits Times Index, actually. Okay, so this is the whole key idea. Now, coming back to my slides, this is what it means. As we can see that Dow Jones consists of these 30 stocks. Now we understand what is Dow Jones. The next component is what is PE ratio. Now, if you have heard of PE ratio, you can type PE. If not, you can type question mark or PE, like you feel like peeing. Okay, not related. Let me hit the laugh button because it's meant to be a lousy joke. Okay, it's not a joke anyway. Anyway, coming back to PE ratio, what does it really mean? There are a few key things to note, and this is very useful for new investors, even seasoned investors, we should revisit this whole entire concept. P stands for price, which is equal to the current stock price. So this particular P changes day to day and second by second when the stock market is open at 9.30 in US, depending on which market you are looking at. Now, so why is this important? Because we are comparing P to E. E is equal to earnings per share, which means that every year when the company makes money or every, every day when the company makes money, they are going to take the whole entire amount of money they make divided by every single share that is in the stock market. Because what's important to me as a shareholder is that particular share, what is my portion of the earnings? So bringing that into perspective, let me give you a particular example. Now, just now we have seen example is, let me just go to my entire screen and share this Dow Jones index, right? E example, American Express. And let me show you some of the websites we can use to find out the P-E ratio of American Express. Now, the particular website that I like to use is this particular website called Morningstar. And I had purposely spelled it wrongly to show you how powerful Google is. 
they can give you the correct website even though you spell it wrongly. American Express Company, Mo Monac, Monac Star. Okay, but anyway, it's called Morning Star. Right here, when you click into it, it is a free website that gives you some of the latest data. So right here, remember PE stands for two things, the price versus the earnings per share. So the first thing we have is the price, $141. So going back to my slides, we can see that American Express stock price is $141. And the next thing that we need to take a look at is the earnings per share. To find the earnings per share, click on key ratios, go to full key ratios data, and we look for this thing called earnings per share. Again, what it means is we take the total net income of the company, okay, divided by the number of outstanding shares they have in the market. So we are going to take a look at the latest result, which is right here, TTM, which stands for the latest result, trailing 12 months. It is 4.83. So coming back to the slides, you can see that the earnings is 4.83, which is equal to the earnings per share. So what is the P ratio? Doing a simple mathematical calculation, you take 100.14, or sorry, 100.41 divided by 4.83, that's equals to 20.79. So, wow, it's going to be very tedious if you have to calculate every single time, correct? Let me just make sure that my banner is not, okay, blocking this. So, the good news is this. As we look for this concept called P-ratio, you can actually understand it to be if you pay $100 for a particular stock, okay, and it's making you about $4.83 every single year, assuming they can continue to make this amount per year, Will they be able to make? Of course, we are going to find companies that we believe can continue to make money for us. It will take us 20.79 years to break even. This is a very simple way of looking at P ratio. So the whole idea is this. When P ratio is lower, it means we take lesser years to break even. Therefore, suggesting that the stock price is cheaper. The valuation is lower. So you can see right here, the P ratio is 20.79. If we wait for the stock price to drop to, let's say, $50, we can say that the P ratio will drop to 10, about 10 point something, which is half. So the lower the P ratio, the cheaper the particular stock is. Okay, set the risk parables, assuming that the stock value or the stock earnings is the same. Now, how do we put this into perspective? But before that, let me show you this. For American Express, if you go back to the website, you can see from this particular site where we can see Morningstar, the stock price, if you click on valuation, they already calculated the P ratio for you. Right under valuation, you can see price to earnings ratio. Look at the current number, it is 20.79. This proves to you that my calculation is accurate and I know how to do division. Now, but is American Express cheap or is it expensive? One benchmark we like to use is basically looking at the past P ratios. So this is the five years average, which is around 16.96. Meaning to say for the past five years, on average, the stock market is willing to buy American Express at a price that allows them to break even in 16.96 years. However, right now, if you buy it today, you have to wait for 20.79 years to break even. Obviously, in the stock market, we do not need to take 16 years or 20 years to break even because stock market is liquid. We can buy and sell stocks any point in time. But the concept is this. Based on the average valuation that the stock market is willing to give American Express, the current P ratio is higher than average. With that in mind, we can say that the P ratio right now is on the high side, higher than average. So I do hope that this helps you. Now, let's see whether I have any comments. And the key thing is this. Now, going back to this whole idea, you can go and test it for individual stocks, comparing it to the past P ratio. And that's where we have it. American Express, look at current versus five years. Now, for Dow Jones, Dow Jones for the past five years PE ratio, if you look at the orange color line, we can see that the P ratio based on here, the average using my perfect eyesight, no, it's not perfect. That's why I'm wearing spectacles. Uh, we can see that it's probably around 18. This is just a, just a ballpark figure, around 18. And right now, the P.E. ratio of Dow Jones is near 24, which is an all-time high based on the past five, past five years. This is due to the fact that the stock price 
has recovered since COVID hits them. But however, the earnings is still at a low. So if the price is high, the earnings is low, it takes longer years for us to break even, assuming that the earnings will continue to stay as it is. But however, all things equal, we can see that the P ratio is on the high side right now. Meaning to say, if you buy right now, you are paying a little bit higher than average. So I do hope that this knowledge has been uh, helping you guys. I'll see if you have any questions to ask. Uh, can you buy shares only based on PE basis? The answer is no. Okay, but thanks for asking this question. The whole key idea is this. We have to buy a good business at a good price. This is very important. So please type it down somewhere and I'll remind you guys this as well. Buy a good business at a good price. Now, so PE ratio only tells us whether this particular company is selling at a valuation higher than average or lower than average. It does not tell you the quality of this particular business. So for example, if I'm going to tell you that you're going to employ this person into your company and on average, his average pay is about, let's say, $3,000. Right now, he's telling you that, well, I'm willing to be employed at $2,000. However, you do not know whether he has been a good performer or not. So we got to do our due diligence to check out this dude and see whether this guy is worth employing or not. So for every company you're buying, think like a boss. Think as if you're employing that company and make sure you want to employ that guy first or, or that company first before you even talk about the salary, which is the price you have to pay. So does this signal a correction is coming? Jordan, in my opinion, when there's a high P ratio, it does signal that it is overvalued. And when a stock market or when a stock is overvalued, it can't stay overvalued for very long. Again, I'm talking about comparing average PE to current PE. So on average, stock market is willing to pay at a certain price. Now, the price is much higher. So two things can happen. Number one, the stock price may drop. And this is what we call a correction. Another thing that can happen is the stock company's earnings may increase to match the expectation. These two things must happen for it to sustain. Otherwise, this high PE, artificially increasing PE, will be known as a bubble because it is not supported by fundamentals. Okay, is it always to compare with Dow Jones and not Nasdaq? Very interesting question. In fact, right now, Dow Jones, in terms of stock movement, has crossed and overtook Nasdaq. By the way, the difference between Dow Jones and Nasdaq is Dow Jones is Dow Jones Industrial Average. They take companies from different sectors and they do a representation of the stock market. However, NASDAQ right now, or rather NASDAQ on the whole, is talking more about technological company. So we can actually look at both, but you can see that for NASDAQ, the price has gone up quite a bit and Dow Jones has catch up and even overtake. So you can actually look at uh, both and see which sectors you want to invest in. If you're looking more at technology companies, you got to look at NASDAQ. So great, I do hope that this is something that's useful to you guys. Continue to ask your questions. I'll go and find more lame jokes and also update you guys on the latest news and explain to you how to invest in a simple way. Personally, I believe that investing in a simple way is the best way. Okay, so that's why I call myself the one-punch investor. Do simple things over and over again and get great results. I'll see you guys tomorrow. Continue to ask your questions and continue to grow as an investor. I'll see you.